Hi, Body Buddies. Hope you are doing well. We are here to talk about high cholesterol, and I'm going to offer some suggestions to you from the Power Foods lifestyle that may help you with a natural way to address your body. I, I have to be very careful of my words and cautious of them, but I will say due to the natural approaches we use with nutrition, we can understand our bodies and we can begin to make big changes, reducing that high cholesterol, the triglycerides, the LDL cholesterol, and better understand a way to eat to prevent this in the first place. So I have some really cool information and, and uh, data to share with you. I am recording this. I built a webinar, so I just thought I wanted to give you guys the information as well. So I just gotta make sure my screens are all set here. So the power of food lifestyle approach is that we really start looking at what's causing our body to manifest in different symptoms. So high cholesterol is when your arteries that supply the heart with blood have fatty deposits, which prevent the heart from getting that oxygen rich blood. Also prevents the blood flow from getting to the brain and that can eventually cause stroke. Or again, if that happens in the heart, that can cause a heart attack. And Really, the research is that one in three people, that's the statistics of how often heart attacks are happening. So we see this is a big problem and dyslipidemia, similar though different, that's the elevation of the plasma cholesterol triglycerides or a low HDL that contributes to the development of atherosclerosis. So atherosclerosis, think of it like your blood vessel and it's building up plaque on the inside. So blood flow is supposed to just, pew, pew, but when you have plaque buildup, it's like narrowing the tunnel and all this blood is trying to get through and if it can't get through that's what heart attacks really come from okay so instead of treating everything with acute symptom cover-up or management which I think it's wonderful that pharmaceutical um, approaches and conventional medicine have offered uh, options for those people who are not willing to look at deeper causes but the fact is our bodies are such a beautiful sophisticated symphony of processes that God has designed and when we seek to understand and discipline and temper ourselves in regards to how we eat how we're looking at the world around us that's when we have the power to start making a difference so I just want to invite you to look for root causes in your body you may need to be doing something in if it's so acute and the onset is so acute that you need something right now but i invite you in the process to really look at what you could be doing to help your body begin functioning the way that perhaps it's more natural to your body so some potential causes of what's going on metabolic dysfunction this is basically how your body breaks down the chemicals when it's converting to energy chronic infections things like if you're dealing with a bacterial overgrowth Gut dysbiosis, that's when things are passing through your gut wall that shouldn't be. I've put some videos up on my YouTube channel that explain that. Look for my videos called Leaky Gut, Microbiome, and Mind-Body Connection. Watch those three, that's homework. And then poor thyroid function, hypothyroidism, or just any underactive thyroid. Um, environmental toxins, things like um, heavy metals, we're getting a lot of aluminum, mercury buildup. In fact, the latest statistic I heard was over 110 metals are found in the average adult body. Oh, no wonder we're not living very long compared to the olden days, right? And genetic predispositions. Now, statins came on the scene in 1987. That's actually when I was born. So they've been around quite some time, and now they are in the top five of prescriptions that are just doled out. And so the problem is that uh, practitioners are just testing like some basics and they're testing your total cholesterol, your LDL and your HDL. Uh, but more functional natural medicine doctors, I have to actually read this to get it right, are suggesting that the most recent re research shows ratio of total to HDL cholesterol as well as non-HDL cholesterol are better predictors, but nowhere near predictive as LDL particle numbers which is almost as good as, here's the top one, your lipoprotein A, so LPA. So if you are going in to get tested, that would be a better test to ask for so that you can determine if you are truly at risk for heart attack or if it's just like, oh, those numbers were off. And so I'm not gonna get into that. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a registered dietitian. I was gonna make my disclaimer. And so I invite you to instead take this information to empower yourself to then take to your doctor and start asking questions and doing your own research. Now, in the process of really understanding cholesterol. Here's three headline titles I want you to share with you. What you need to realize is that pharmaceutical
pharmaceutical companies in certain industries who pay money to have news done to then sway our opinions. Here's three sensationalist headlines, which I feel uh, were completely paid off. Okay, so here's how to spot them. Uh, from 2017, NBC News, too many people stop their life-saving statins, doctors say. December 4th, 2015, this is from ACSH.org, too few Americans take statins, CDC study reveals. Uh, May 12th, 2017, statins lower heart attack, stroke risk in people at average risk. All right, let's get into some nitty gritty. Let's understand how this is happening, what you can do about it. I'm not going to spend too long on this. Oxidation. Your plaque in your arteries builds up when those chemicals are oxidized, when cholesterol is oxidized, when fats are oxidized. Sugar is your main oxidizer. So anything, whether it's straight sugar, whether it's carbohydrates, think pastries, breads, pastas, pop tarts, crackers, cookies, there's a lot of carbs out there, break down sugar. Sugar, when it's eaten with high cholesterol foods, saturated fat foods is going to oxidize that. So cholesterol and fatty foods on their own, not a problem. When we put sugar together in large portions, we're oxidizing a lot of that. That's going to cause buildup. Now, think about this. PVF, PVC. If you're here watching this, I hope you are at least familiar with my methodology. Otherwise, I invite you to read my book, The Power Foods Lifestyle, over at powerfoodslifestyle.com. Start your journey there. So protein, veggie, fat, is a combination of, you choose a, a protein-based food, a veggie-based food, and a fats-based food, or a PVC, a protein, a veggie, and a carb. Why do you think I've separated the fats and the carbs? Is it to make you fearful of putting fats and carbs together? No, it's to make you aware and mindful because too much of those food nutrients can cause some traffic jams in the body and cause some ulterior things that are not supposed to be happening. So here's where the, the rubber meets the road. Your body, when you eat food, due to the process of utilizing that energy and shifting those chemicals to be used and build tissues and give you energy and everything that's just so amazing that your body does, in that process, it produces something called free radicals. This is an unpaired electron. Now, your body was naturally designed to do this, but when you are not eating vegetables that have antioxidants, some fruits, I'm not a, you know, if you've read my book, I'm not a fan of all the fruits. You should not have an equal ratio. It should be veggies here, fruits here. Those antioxidants, think about it, antioxidant. They go against oxidation. So they are what bind with that free radical to neutralize it, send it on its way. Get rid of it. When it, that doesn't happen, then it's left to ping around and attach to things that shouldn't cause inflammation and build up and all this chaos in your body. That is why I am the veggie girl. And I'm saying, eat your veggies every single meal. Water-based veggie, cruciferous veggies, leafy greens, and all your other miscellaneous veggies. We keep it simple here at Power Foods Lifestyle. I don't care what the real names are. Whatever. If you want to feel smart, awesome. Keep it simple. That's how we follow through. So anti antioxidants from the veggies will help to move those free uh, radicals on. Let's move on. How do you reduce the cholesterol in foods? Like are people the number two, actually top three things. People are like, well, looks like I got to give up bacon, eggs, and red meat. Mm, that's black or white thinking. We're not asking deeper questions. Let me provide some insight. So if you are a hyper responder to saturated fat, which you may be, and the only way to know this is after living a PVF primarily focused lifestyle, I did have a client that we did find was a hyper responder. We had her eating bacon because she liked it three times a week. We had her, her cholesterol test done. After that, we reduced, we kicked bacon out, replaced it, and that was it. So she was doing everything right. We just had to get that last little thing. And so... It's not all or nothing because she was still having saturated fat. We just noticed she was a hyper responder. So now proper red meat amounts here at Power Foods Lifestyle for most populations, I need you to be eating no more than three servings of red meat per week. Minimum one due to the iron content. Too many people are anemic and it is causing some severe problems. We're not going to go down that road, but I really highly recommend a grass fed, very organic red meat. I personally love butcher box. They source all the grass fed, grass finished beef. So portion size of your palm, you're going to restaurants, you're coming back with a stick this big. That Congrats. You are now food prepped for the next 20 weeks. Put it in the freezer. <laughs> all right. So um, not a problem, but when you're putting it with a 
baked potato, that's breaking down to your sugars, oxidizing the cholesterol in the steak. So instead, I'd rather have you eat a lovely green salad, lots of leafy greens, so we're not getting all of that glucose sugar to oxidize the red meat. Same thing with eggs. Instead of having your eggs, which those yolks are cholesterol, guess what? On my 15 principal recommendation for the healthiest, most strategic lifestyle, I tell people, eat one egg a day. No more than three is the powerful lifestyle recommendation. One, two, or three, but no need to get over that. Depends on your situation. Take every principle I'm sharing with you, take it to the test. Don't take it as the definitive end-all, be-all. Test it, prove it, research it, okay? It's a good starting point. So the proper amount, if you're gonna have eggs, I'd highly recommend you don't put your bacon with that meal too. In the Power Foods Lifestyle Recipes, anytime I have bacon in the meal, we strip the yolk and we just do the egg whites. Interesting, we're seeing the connection here. If you're going to do egg yolks, I don't want you having the bread or the carbs with it. I don't want you doing the bacon. I'd rather have you do the avocado, keep it to a fats-based meal, and then you can bring in your carbs later when there's not some cholesterol present. Are you seeing now some connection in the Power Foods Lifestyle Strategies? I really hope so. If you are totally new to this, don't be overwhelmed. I get so many messages where people are saying, I am so overwhelmed, where do I start? Do, 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 and become a one podcast a day person. I have a 30 day challenge. Listen to one of my podcasts every single day. Give yourself 30 days of learning and you will be amazed at how much more empowered you feel. Is animal fat bad? No, it is needed to make proper vitamins, especially like the vitamin A, okay, other hormones in the body, but it's all about the ratio. Here at Power Foods Show, we make the whole debate worldwide so dang simple. One serving of saturated fat to every two servings of unsaturated fats. Do you have to have a one to two ratio? No, but that's the maximum. You could go one to three, one to four, one to five, one to six. I don't care, but not a one to one. So here's an example. Bacon, saturated fat from an animal. Avocado, pine nuts from the earth. Egg yolks, olives from the earth. Olive oil from the earth. Are you getting my drift? As you're aware of where your fat sources are coming from, you don't need to be hyper aware, but you do need to be aware. It's your job as a human being living in a body to be mindful of what you're eating because that's the vehicle that you're living your life in. So it is very beneficial to be doing these things. Eat more fiber rich foods. If you go get my power foods list, it has all of these foods on that list. It really helps with your grocery shopping and in meal idea creation, you should be sitting down sometime in your week and saying, let's plan out our meals. We need to start living proactively rather than reactively. Lentils, black beans, Oats, I'm going through our carbs first. Bran flakes, whole, whole wheat pasta, unless you have a gluten sensitivity, then of course that one gets exchanged. It could be a gluten-free pasta, but you know, just make sure it's really, um, it's got some good vitamins and nutrients in it. Vegetables, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. I had a huge kale, broccoli, Brussels sprout saute this morning in some coconut oil and some ghee, clarified butter. And then I had eggs, egg whites, and some avocado on top. Like that's dreamy. That's like the breakfast I have every day. Uh, amazing. Then we have our fruits, apples, raspberries. You could put blueberries in there too. So there's some ideas for more fiber rich foods that does help, but it's not the end all be all. You need to really say, hey, I need to do one thing from this category, one thing from this category, one thing from this category. All right, I'm running out of time. I gotta hustle. Proper supplementation, Don't if you're getting too much iron, that's a problem. Again, our principle of how much red meat to be eating in a week, we'll fix that right out the gate if you follow that principle of no more than three times a week. Not enough vitamin D. This is a big problem we see all the time and hear about all the time. If you're not supplementing or spending adequate time in sunlight, you are probably deficient in vitamin D. This is absolutely critical for producing dopamine in the brain, that neurotransmitter that helps you feel okay. Okay, serotonin, dopamine, acetylcholine, like all of those neurotransmitters they all have ways that they're created. No time to go into that today, but minimum recommendation of what most practitioners are recommending is 5,000 international units per day. Um, if you're deficient, of course, your, your naturopathic doctor or your regular doctor may recommend a higher amount, but 5,000 is a pretty baseline. Curcumin is a spice that you could be doing one to three grams per day. Fish oil, which is your omega-3s, three to four grams a day. Nitric oxide, I do have two companies that have a patented form of nitric oxide. What it does is it dilates the blood vessel. So instead of cutting down, it's gonna open that up. So especially if you have acute onset and it's a very, very like bad situation with your cholesterol, I highly recommend you message me, get a link for one of those. It is pricey, it's worth it. 
if it's either that or dealing with a heart attack. So that one, I'm just going to say straight out the gate. If you have been warned by your doctor and you are on statins, you may want to highly consider getting on a nitric oxide supplement. Niacin does the same thing. Garlic, 500 milligrams a day. Again, check everything with your doctor, people. Don't be silly. Don't give me messages like, well, you said this. All right, powerful lifestyle approach in two minutes. Eat four to six meals per day, three to four hours apart. Anchor every meal with a protein and a veggie. Eat at least three power fats unsaturated. My top three, avocado, olive, yes, any variety, and any of your healthy oils. Avocado oil, coconut oil, um, extra virgin olive oil, flaxseed oil, any of those. Uh, the fourth one, because a lot of people are like, I don't do olives or I don't do avocado. Then your fourth one is raw nuts, but never more than the palm of your hand and they need to be raw. Eat one serving of fruit a day, half a cup. Top three that I'd recommend would be berries, apples, grapefruit. Lower glycemic, eat one serving of complex carbs a day. And that's if you feel like it. If you're at that point of you got inflammation down, you feel like, okay, I'm done going through an aggressive phase, then you could add in half a cup cooked. I highly recommend getting used to lentils, quinoa chickpeas, black beans, um, sweet potato. Those are like our top five complex carbs or oats, gluten-free oats. Um, and then, yeah, that's kind of it. So if you're not signed up, if you're not on my waiting list for my 12-week academy, it's a re-education. It basically takes you from scratch and says, wipe the slate clean. I know you think you know stuff, but I'm going to reteach you how probably it's going to serve you the rest of your life and make you an empowering source to those people around you. So get on the waiting list at powerfoodslifestyle.com forward slash enroll. All right. Now I can actually see you coming back here. I just got to go like this. Apparently I have to save my thing. All right. Well, wow, there's still people here. Awesome. Fun to see you. I hope that was helpful. Your body is powerful. Um, this is absolutely critical in a world where you've got to look at the profitability of, of uh, companies. You've got to look at ulterior motives. Um, I never want to ever fault conventional medicine practitioners ever. Um, I highly respect them. Just looking at logically, do they have the time, energy, et cetera, to research into all of these depths when, and I know a lot of them, some of them do, uh, but I think just time, space, and like ability, or if they haven't done any continuing education since medical school, they're not going to know this. And that's something I hear often from my clients. They're like, why didn't my doctor tell me this? You just like blew my mind with the truth. And why didn't my doctor tell me? I'm like, well, have compassion. Like maybe they didn't know. Maybe they didn't put time into that continuing research. I am heavily invested in the most latest research. So anyhow, hope this empowers you. Share it with someone who can be of value. I'm on the calls. Power your body. One meal, one workout, one day at a time.